Hello everyone, this is Didatrax83 here with another Runit tutorial. This is tutorial part 1.5, and today I'm going to be showing you how to find the sound cues for the Runit sound files so that you can make your own sounds other than the horns. Now we all know what the sound cues which I found are for the horn are attack and release. What about the rest? What about for detectors? What about for the beeps for chat? What about all that stuff? Well, here I'm how to, today I'm going to show you how to find it on your own because releasing that sound bank text file was uh, not a good idea and uh, special thanks to the guys at the depot for making that call and uh, reminding me that that might actually be copyrighted material so that download was put on hold so um, yeah so I'll show you how to do it on your own this makes things a lot easier and allows me to actually post this video to any run it community to help out so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our run it directory so, local disk C, local files, x86, if you're on any computer that is an XP. Um, do, 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 where did I put it? Run 8 Studios, Run 8 Train Simulator. It'd be really nice if this would open. There we go. Uh, content. Rail vehicles and sounds. Now this is just for the locomotive sounds. I'll show you what the other sounds are. But for example, let's just take a look. So we know that XSB is a sound bank. So let's go take a look at the P42 sound files, the engine sounds. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the file, the sound bank file, and we're going to go to open with. Now for most people it's simply just going to say open with and choose default program or it's just going to say open with and there won't be a option here on the side. So what we're going to do is I'll just show you how to do it the proper way. Is you'd right click and hit choose and then this particular little screen right here will look different for Windows 7 users. This is simply because I'm on 8 and I think it's the same for Windows 10. So the first thing you're going to want to do is see this checkbox. This would associate whatever program you click on with all of XSB files. You don't want to do that because the last thing you want to do is screw up any Run8 files by associating them with something else because then you could actually really screw them up. So we're going to untick this tick box, meaning it's a one-time deal thing. So in our case, what we'll do is we'll click on Notepad because you can open these. Now you notice everything up here. The SDBK means sound bank. All this is gibberish. Okay, all this right here, gibberish. But if you look past the highlighted, take a look right here. These are all the sound banks, are all the sound cues. So control underscore click is when you would click a button. Big hole, I have no idea but what that one means. This is the sound of the dynamic brake fan right here. There's the sound cue for the sander, uh, for the independent apply. For the cab warning bell, which I would assume is either the train line alarm, is either that school bell sound, uh, as rather than the alerter, as I believe the alerter has its own standard sound effect for all engines, the bell valve, control button, control switch. So that's what it is for the P42. So these are the sound cues that you'd put into X-Act, just like you would when we edited our past sounds thing. Um, so that's that. So I'll show you how to do ones, and you, as you all know, you know how to re-alias a sound bank and wave bank once you've created sounds. So now we're going to go back into content, and this includes sound. This is where all of your other sounds are. This is a custom one I uh, made for Selkirk that uh, Brad Brown himself actually commented on. So uh, thanks Run8 Studios for noticing that. It really means a lot. So we're going to go look at uh, Mr. Dale Miller's uh, detector sounds and see what the cues are to make how the detector works, how the sounds work for that. So we're going to right click. Now that you've done that first step, when you go to open with, it will give you this and it'll ask, do you want to open it with notepad? I've opened it with both of these, so that's what gives me both. You'll see, it's all made, it's not just a couple things, it's a whole bunch of different sound files that spell out the words. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Point is its own word, the greeting, which is BNSF detector milepost, no defects, stop train, total axles, ambient temperature, track, train speed, miles per hour, degrees, detector out, hotbox, and axle dragging equipment. So you see, 
and even gives the list of the sound bank inside itself. Isn't that just wonderful to remind you where you are? So, this has just been a simple tutorial to show you how to find those so that you can edit them on your own. Um, so, I hope you all like that, and I can even demonstrate what it's like to make those types of sound files real quick. Let me... And uh, in... I can also then show you how to re-alias the sounds for detectors. Uh, that'll be its own part. It'll be part 1.6 where you have to edit one XML file in that particular route folder to re-alias the detector sound files, which is pretty much doing it the exact same way as um, as as uh, aliasing uh, horn and bell sounds in the locomotive XML files. So hopefully, if I just double check what my recording looks like, yes, it is recording, right? We're gonna go to Selkirk real quick. Where are we gonna spawn? We'll spawn at CPSM because of the detector there. Um. And as many of you know, I'll probably make a tutorial on this. Well, actually, I don't want to click now because then Run 8 will freeze. Um, but if many, for those of you who haven't seen, I did show this in the first tutorials. That's just a custom load screen. Mainly, I'm actually, mainly I did that more to keep the hype going for V2. All I did was export the file, edit it in MS Paint in five minutes, recompile it using uh, another public tool made for a completely different game that just so happens to run on XNA 3.1. I believe it's... what game is it? It's a public community tool, Magicka Modder. Anyways, while Run Aid is taking its sweet time loading everything and anything... Um, yeah. So... I decided to make this, the main reason I tried to do this tutorial series is I just thought I'd help out the community and give the community something to do while they're waiting for V2 and now some of the uh, new V1 content that's coming out. So that was my opinion for doing this kind of tutorial and I really hope it has helped you guys out. I've gotten a lot of messages, comments, and things from people in the whole, all over the Run8 community asking about the horn tutorial. I honestly didn't think it was going to get that big. So let's see. You'll hear a detector that I made, which is close, but it's referencing the wrong railroad, but that's deliberate. So we're going to go Freight Locos. Let's spawn in just for simplicity's sake. We'll just spawn on high rail. We'll get in. Start it all up. Run up to the detector at CPSM, and I'm just simply showing this off just so that you guys can see what this actually does. So, this is just a sound file I made. Guilford Rail System Detector Milepost 8.35 Track 1. And that's basically my detector. So, again, really hope you guys enjoy this. This has been Data Tracks 83 from the Run 8 tutorial series. Have a good.